In this video, we're going to think about the random walk model. As a reminder, let's extract from the GAFA stock symbol the Google closing stock price for 2018. And here's a plot of the data that we saw uh, in the previous uh, video. Hence, um, looking at this time series, we see the typical um, wandering behavior of financial uh, time series of financial index or a closing uh, stock price. Um, looking at the ACF of this is very slowly decaying, hence it leads us again to uh, to conclude that this uh, time series is clearly non-stationary. When we look at the difference of this, now we say we see some very different behavior and this is clearly now stationary time series. And furthermore, when we look at the ACF of this difference time series, now um, we conclude that this time series is not only stationary, but it is white noise. There's one significant spike there, but um, we can ignore that, um, as we said, due to a type uh, one error, prob the probability of a type one error. Hence, let's recap that the differences show us the day-to-day -day changes and the differences, these day-to-day changes now look like white noise series. There's no significant or correlations outside the 95% uh, limits. Um, just as an aside, which helps us think about the concepts of white noise and stationarity. White noise always implies stationarity. A white noise process is a stationary process. Stationarity does not always imply white noise. In fact, this is what we want to do. We want to take some data, make it stationary, and then model whatever dynamics are left over using ARMA components. So the conclusion that we draw from this simple analysis is that the daily change in the Google stock price is essentially a random walk amount uncorrelated with a previous state. Now, a model related to model this type of time series is the random walk model. How do we define the random walk model? Well, yt minus yt minus one, we show that is white noise, hence is it equal to epsilon t. Just rearranging this, we can show that yt is equal to yt minus one plus a random process epsilon t. And for the random process, we assume that this got mean zero, variance sigma squared, and it is normally and um, independently distributed. Now, this type of model is very widely used for non-stationary data. Um, and this is the model behind the naive method. You can easily show that. Assume that our sample goes from t equals 1 to capital T. Then the expected value of a future um, value of this random variable, yt plus 1 conditional on what we've observed, is equal to yt. This is the last observation, hence this is a fixed value, plus the expected value of the random error at time t plus one, which is equal to zero. Hence, the expected value of my y t plus one condition on t is equal to the last thing I observed. We can roll this forward to y t plus two. There'll be the expected value of y t plus one condition on t plus expected value of the random error at t plus two. So this is zero. This we can substitute in from what we've worked on in the previous step. Hence, the expected value of two step ahead is equal to yt, and we can generalize that to h steps ahead. Hence, this is the model that underlies the naive method. So random walks typically have long periods of apparent trends up or down. Then we have some sudden and unpredictable changes in direction. Hence, these are very hard to predict. We, generally, these are referred to as a stochastic trend. Forecasts are equal to the last observation, hence the naive, and future movements up or down are equally likely. Now, if the difference time series is white noise with a non-zero mean, hence if we take yt minus yt minus one, and then we have some constant c, rearranging this, we get what we call the random walk with drift model. Hence, uh, this c here is the average non-zero average change between consecutive observations. Now, if C is greater than zero, YT will 
tend to drift upwards and vice versa if C is negative will tend to drift downwards. So this model now has a stochastic trend due to the random walk, but also a deterministic trend due to the constant, due to the drift factor. So this is the model behind the drift method that we saw in earlier sections of the book. Now, if we seasonally difference data and that results into a white noise process, then we can think about a seasonal random walk. And this is the model behind the seasonal naive method.